Hey, I'm Megan Scully and this is the Limerick Post Show. Coming up on today's show, the big interview is with the South African tag rugby team who travelled to Ireland to take part in the Pig and Porter Festival. First up though, the top stories in Limerick. €380,000 has been allocated to Limerick Festivals, which is absolutely wonderful news for the city and county. Next up to rugby fans, Munster take on Connacht in a pre-season friendly on September 21st and that will take place in the sports ground in Galway. Who will I cheer for? Oh, I'll just wait and see what happens and look at the scoreline. And finally, the Social Enterprise Development Fund Awards took place in Alex Finelater and Co. on O'Connell Street in Limerick and we caught up with some of the awardees. So here outside Alex and Finlater where the Social Innovation Enterprise Funding Awards have been taking place and I'm here at Maura Leary from St Gabriel's who received some funding for one section of the, the many things you do. Can you tell me um, who got the funding and how important it is? Okay, so St Gabriel's Orthotic Services received the funding this year and um, it's in the amount of €50,000 for our uh, social enterprise of St Gabriel's Orthotic Services. Now that's obviously a huge amount of money and it's going to, I suppose, do so much for you and your organisation. Have you decided yet what you're going to do with it, how you're going to spend it? Yes, we have. So last year, St Gabriel's Orthotic Services uh, were part of the Social Innovation Fund Award as well and they were on the Accelerator Programme where we developed a business plan over the year. So this next award will enable us to put that business plan into action. So it'll improve services that we provide around orthotics for children with disabilities. So an orthotic is an essential part of treatment if a child has a physical disability. It prevents joint contractions, it improves posture, it prevents scoliosis. So all the orthotics that children receive through us, um, it will really help us provide better service. The, it's, it's the only not-for-profit orthotic service in the country. It's a family-centred practice and um, we're very proud that we got this award today. And it makes such a difference to these, these children's lives, be able to give them like a, a, a nice quality of life as well. Yes. Um, as I said, orthotics are essential. We pride ourselves on being a St. Gabriel's Orthotic Services family-centred. So there is a difference between, I suppose, just going down the street to buy something commercially and having this prescribed. Um, we get referrals from all the orthopaedic surgeons, the physiotherapists in the region. We have three um, highly trained orthotists working for us. Dr. Declan Sweeney is the orthotist manager. And um, we have three orthotists a technician and two admin staff so we really have a very busy service we have over 4,000 appointments a year Wow, that's absolutely yeah. incredible. Yeah. Now, I know that's not the only work you do. Can you tell me what else St. Gabriel's do? So, St. Gabriel's was founded as a charity in 1961. Um, it was founded really around the development of a special school in the area. That expanded. We now provide therapy services to over 600 children in the region. We have um, two social enterprises, our orthotic services and our hydrotherapy pool. And we have, um, I suppose, developed around the school and the therapy. We've now built a respite house for children with very complex needs mm. in Mungret and we're really lobbying hard to get national funding to run that. Do you know what? All I can say is the very best luck with it, and I've no doubt that you will secure it. And congrats Thank again. You very much, Megan. Thank, Thank you. you. And in this week's Out and About, I caught up with Helen O'Donnell of Team Limer Cleanup to chat all about Plastic Free July. First up, though, I chat to Lisa Daly of Pride, all about Pride Limerick, because of course, this Saturday, the Pride Parade takes place. Well, today the lovely girls at uh, Limer Printmakers always, the last couple of years, have agreed to do this printing for us. So you bring along your T-shirts, bags, and it's basically get parade ready, and they do a free charge for us each year, um, which is great. So I just hope that there's more and more turnout each time they put on the event for them. It's absolutely incredible, and I was told to bring an 100% cotton T-shirt for it, so I have to say I tore my wardrobe apart. I was like, surely I have something, and I found something, so we're going to get it printed up soon. But how important is it for places around Limerick to get involved at Limerick Pride and doing something like this? It's very important because um, one of the girls here, they do our logo, so it's so visible then to go out with the colours, and and then it has a further parade, and people keep them as well, so it keeps the rainbow along. then when we have companies involved, there's just more awareness, we have more events, so it really pushes it out more, shows the LGBT more, and I think it's more exposure for us, more spaces for us, and with that has shown the growth that Limerick, with more places like the Limerick Printmakers coming behind us, and it's not just pub events and mm-hmm. things like that, it shows that there's a lot of different choices with events now, so it opens it all up, we're not just hiding down a lane in some bar. <laughs> I think it's amazing to see too, when um, I came back into Limerick there, the other week seeing all the uh, the flags all the way along the bridge it just like like it brightens up the whole place but it's so good to see that so many people are supporting pride now yeah and um, last year we had to do without the flags because Limerick Pride is a charity organization so we're all voluntarily 
Do you know, so when it came to the flags, we couldn't afford it because the flags are just so expensive. It comes over 2,000 euros for us to put up them flags. So for us to actually provide that, we would have had to sacrifice the festival. Mm. So this year, um, the end of Pride last year, it was something that I really highlighted and I wanted it to be highlighted. I wanted people to notice the flags missing. Um, so people got onto us and with that, we contacted the council and put pressure on the council that this should be shown like we shouldn't have to keep scraping up yours for raffle books to try and put these things up because it's us trying to highlight the city. And as you said yourself, it adds so much colour to the city. So they should be supporting us and getting behind us more and things like that. So really, while I'm involved, I will constantly put that foot up the backside <laughs> to make sure that there's rainbows. I have to say, I think it's great seeing some events. Like you said, it's not just pubs anymore. Yeah. There's a makeup demo taking place tomorrow. And um, yeah, yeah, and there's a load more things. There's a quiz as well, I believe, taking place we one of the nights. Uh, the quiz last night, the table quiz. And tonight, or tomorrow night is the makeup um, in the Clayton. That's with Jake Meehan. Mm. He's coming up from Cork. He's over 12,000 Instagram followers. So I think it's the younger one. So hopefully now they turn up um, because it's the first time we brought a makeup kind of mm. tutorial into it. And it was a lot of it was to identify as well, not just with the younger gays and wanting to know what the makeup is. And same with guys um, who now love their makeup. But it was also for we receive a lot of questions from the trans community about makeup. And whereas Jake, we found, was the person that was best to suit both male and female, and could give him advice because he often wears it himself. So we thought he'd be the best person to bring. Then we have Thursday in the commercial. We have movie and bingo night. Yeah, so yeah <laughs> it um, looks like a lot of fun. We're bringing uh, the movie will be the Stonewall mm-hmm. riots uh, to kind of just give people the gist of really what happened. The ones that wouldn't be so mm-hmm. familiar with it. And um, we brought Carrie the way we're after hiring her again to come back because we had her hired for. Mr. Miss um, the other night and she went down a storm people were falling off to cease from laughing so we just thought you know what bring her back bring her back for <laughs> yeah. the bingo and so that has got a great reaction since we said we're bringing her back and then Mickey's is the night before Pride the usual uh, <laughs> Mickey Martins have pulled out all the stops this year and um, I'm very excited I always get excited about Mickey's <laughs> it's the one event I think um, pub events and stuff that I don't have you know I get an influence in it I chat about it but I don't have to do the bookings I don't have to do anything bar enjoy turn up and enjoy <laughs> yeah yeah and I love that about Deirdre and then Saturday is the big day yeah. yeah and this year for the first time um, we're bringing for the Sunday because I notice we f- keep forgetting to <laughs> highlight our Sunday mm-hmm. our Sunday this year is in Mickey Martin's and the idea came behind we were doing a close and you know wind down chill kind of thing and when I spoke with older generations of the gay community, ones that would have taken part in Dublin parades, um, when they first started and before it became this big fashionable thing and they were getting booed going up the streets, they told me Gay Pride, we had a conversation about how far Gay Pride has come and a big festival behind it now compared to when they started mm-hmm. protesting. And they told me that Gay Pride back then to them was they would turn up, do the protests, and they'd go to this field or whatever, and they had music and they had picnics. So it was like a gay pride picnic. So Mickey Martins and myself sat down and spoke about this. So they have the grass out and everything. So on the Saturday, oh. we're actually having a barbecue, picnic, wind down, chill out with Mickey's. And historian chats with Sharon Slater. Uh, well, hopefully that's not confirmed. But dim kind of bits. Yeah, so we're trying to get all of it this year, um, especially with being Stonewall. I just thought it'd be a great way, to, a great year to bring it back. And I've been encouraging and throwing that word out to even all the older ones saying, come and support it and if there's great support this year is something we could keep you know so. and just get bigger and better every single yeah. year I'll tell you I'm already so excited for everything at least daily thank you so much for chatting no to Limerick Post today no problem my pleasure thanks very much <laughs> and happy pride Yay. I'm joined now by Helen O'Donnell of Team Limerick Cleanup and all I can say first of all is these cups are incredible I'm using mine every single day and you know what they're e-coffee cups as well so they're good for the environment which is the main reason behind all this and I'm delighted you love it and everybody can have one if they apply um, or join the competition on Team Limit Cleanup uh, go on the site and you can actually register and you might win a cup 
I know lots of people have. Yeah, and you know what I say, the one thing I love about these, because I'm very particular about my cup, is that they're actually very nice to drink out of. And that's the thing a lot of times when people get these cups is they don't like the kind of sensation or the the kind of, I suppose, what they're made of. But these are lovely and actually feel nice to drink out of, if that's a a normal thing to say. A lot of research went into these because we had cups a couple of years ago. They were too tall. People didn't like the taste. They're too plasticky. These are really good and they're environmentally excellent. Uh, Also good from the point of view of the coffee shop because it fits underneath and you can make good coffee, any type of coffee into it. Now, something else that's going on that, you know, we really want the people of Limerick to get behind is Plastic Free July. It's become a huge problem worldwide. So much plastic been thrown away, just been used, like, aimlessly, not really needed at all. So we're kind of asking people now to get more conscious and stop using plastic. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic initiative. Mm. And it's just about people thinking. Um, you know, if you see vegetables in a shop, take the ones that don't have plastic mm. on them. If you see fruit in a shop, take the ones in a cardboard box or, you know, non-plastic. Um, because that plastic is one use, one use only, mm. and it's going into the environment. And it's, you know, going in to make a, a huge challenge for the environment. It has to go somewhere. Mm. And it's not recycled properly. People aren't putting it in the right bins, aren't segregating stuff properly. And I think, you know, keep it simple because people get a bit confused when you go into, you know, the segregation and what. Uh, keep it simple. Try and do something. If everybody yeah. tried to do something. Here in my workspace, uh, we've tried to reduce cling film significantly. Mm. So instead of wrapping food in cling film, we put in boxes with lids. Okay. It takes a bit of um, a change, change the mindset, uh, but that type of thing is good. We also have conscious cup. So if you bring your cup in, you'll get a discount on the coffee. Brilliant. Um, it's because obviously we don't have to wash your cup, and <laughs> um, we also are happy that you're not using a single-use cup. While um, you know biodegradable, biodegradable cups are great, they'll end up in perhaps a bin of mixed rubbish, and they'll end up in landfill. And this is the problem, I suppose, in the city. This is a big challenge that we must have a compostable mm. bins available. Yeah for people because if I'm investing in compostable product you want to be able to put it somewhere and you can't you know take it in your bag if it's food soiled or you know you don't want to bring it into an office if there's a fishy smell off it so you must have compostable bins and carry the, the um, process through but I think the plastic free July is brilliant and um, kids are incredible <laughs> I've been to a few schools with green flags and they're absolutely extraordinary and I think they're teaching their parents and mm-hmm. um, it's just to get the message through to everybody uh, it's one world uh, one globe and we must mind it and we want it there for the future generations and there are no excuses for this with the amount of waste and the amount of plastic we use it's quite extraordinary also a lot of um, supermarkets are now mm-hmm. giving you a facility where you can take off your packaging yeah. and bring your product home we, I don't know if we have we do have some shops where you can buy um, scoops of um, cereals yeah, and I know the co-op um, the co-op shop do that but um you know to encourage that to encourage people to stop using plastic stop using plastic bottles yes. uh, you know if you must Free use um, uh, buy a glass bottle and put it into glass recycling that's what I do if I'm stuck now I have to go into a garage I buy a glass bottle it's heavier but you know you're doing something for the environment and the cost is the same uh, just put into recycle we're here in the pavilion in UL and I'm joined by Team South Africa for the Men's Open it's Sean and Carol welcome to Limerick thank you very much thank you very much it. It. now you're here a week isn't it Excuse me? You're here one week? No. Yeah. Well, yeah, last no week you arrived into Dublin, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, is it true that Tag Rugby is was only set up, you only set up a team, is it two years ago? It's fairly new, isn't it? Uh, in South Africa, we've um, set up Tag Rugby about five years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, we were fortunate enough to send our first men's open team to the World Cup in 2015 in um, Sunshine Coast in Australia. Um, and then we've just been building up since then. Um, and then last year in the World Cup for Crofts Harbour, we also sent up a men's open team. And then um, for the first time ever, the men, the, well, the mix um, team has been playing a test series and experiencing something new. Um, so we're busy building and we're getting really getting there. It's a bit more interest in South Africa at the moment. Um, so everything is looking exciting. How have you found it here in Ireland? Um, is it your first time in Ireland? Have you been here before? First time in Ireland um, and it's absolutely beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. Grass is always green, <laughs> always green. You don't see a brown patch. Um, the weather is great. Well, since we've been here, the weather has been great. Not, a, not too much rain. Um, but yeah, I'm actually loving it. It's funny, we think there's loads of rain because it's meant to be summertime. So we're like, oh, the weather's so bad. But I suppose you probably come from really hot conditions. Yeah, well, Cape Town is really hot. It's if, even because we said we wanted Ireland to 
tour to South Africa in December uh, for like uh, one of our um, events. Yeah. Um, and then if they're going to come play there, you're going to experience about 35 degree oh, warm weather. Oh, okay. That's yeah, really it's hot. All, it's really hot. So you're not going to get uh, clouds and all that. Okay, so we find 20 degrees hot. Yeah, no, 20 is a breeze for us there. It's a breeze. <laughs> now, I saw you went on a tour, a walking tour of Limerick City. What do you think of Limerick City? It's very medieval. The castle, I think you saw the Treaty Stone. I think you saw, when, did you drink some beer in Treaty Brewery as well? Yeah. What did you think of the city? It was really nice. It was, it's different. And we were looking at it and we are like, yo, this is dark ages. We we didn't know about these things. and. At the end of the day, it's just a learning experience, a learning experience mm. for us and us getting to know about the history of Limerick and how things happened here. Because we walked past the house with the, sh- with the, with the shots in. Yeah. Oh, that was insane. It is. It's a really cool city. Now, I suppose, m- more importantly, back to the Tag Rugby. You've been playing all week. I know you're playing against the Limerick team. You've played against Dublin teams. And then uh, there's a test against Ireland this evening. How are you finding playing Tag Rugby over here and how are you finding the competition? Um, it's definitely tough. But at the at the at the end of the day, it's a lot of our. We've all been pre- uh, preparing for mm. this, and I mean, it's this is only the start of this series. Like <laughs> Ireland is going to come to us at the end of the year. Then it's going to become a bigger thing than just Ireland versus SA. So we're always trying to look at the bigger picture and trying to grow the game itself. And competition-wise, it's very very tough, but. We're adjusting very well as well. Well, I was there on Tuesday in UL to watch you take on the Limerick teams, and I think you won both matches that day. Mm. So uh, it was really good, really competitive, and loads of people turned out as well. Um, so I think it must be, it's it, like there's great support, especially in Limerick, and obviously the World Cup is coming here as well. So uh, you're getting set up for that now as well, I guess. Yeah, so um, the, because we've got a lot of youngsters in the team, like haven't played on an international level yet um, so it's a very good experience for them and <clears throat> obviously the big picture is 2021 um, so this is a building phase for us and um, I'm from my side and well from the men's side just for the mix side to be here is a big step for mm-hmm. us as South African tag um, so 2021 for the mix side is going to be big it's going to be massive um, even with the girls going back to South Africa now all their friends are going to join in. That's what yeah. I know for a fact. Um, so, and then obviously, 2021 World Cup in Limerick. This whole university is absolutely phenomenal. Yes. This is going to be a tag town where everyone just stays in the same place. It's a lot of um, mingling around, new friendship being built. Um, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we are so excited for the World Cup. And as I said, you're here in the what I always tell people is the best university in Ireland, the best facilities and the best campus. So at least you guys, you're, you're getting to try it out yeah. before anyone else then as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, when we arrived here, yeah, so um, basically about three weeks before we left South Africa, we didn't even know we were going to stay here. Um, <laughs> and then when we arrived here, yeah, we were absolutely blown away especially with the, the amazing facility mm. um, this place has to offer. So we're really grateful to be here yeah. um, and we're just taking everything in day by day. And have you got to see Munster Rugby set up yet? You know, Munster Rugby is on the campus as well. Yeah, yeah. we've walked past it a couple of times. We haven't gone in actually. Mm. Um, so, but we've seen them training on, uh, I think it was on Wednesday morning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it was Wednesday morning they were training on the field, so we had a bit of a sit and just watched them train, uh, which was good. Um, so, yeah. And of course, now the big one, Pig and Porter. So, hopefully, after Pig and Porter, you'll get to relax and enjoy yourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. That is the, That was the big plan, but um, unfortunately, we have to be up at six o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning because certain people is flying early. Um, so, some of the players is flying early. So, um, yeah, the guys are definitely gonna they're gonna let loose on off the pig and porter and just relax and have a bit of Irish dancing. Yeah, yeah there's a, there's Irish definitely cheer. some guys that will do that. <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely some guys that will do that. But yeah, we're looking really looking forward because um, in South Africa you just hear the pig and porter, pig and porter, pig yeah. and porter, but no one has ever experienced it though. So for us to experience something new is always great, um, and we're really looking forward to it. Though. Well, all I can say is thank you so much for chatting to the Limerick Post and we wish you all the best at Pig and Porter and of course we're going to see you back here for the World Cup. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you very much, appreciate it. Now I'm joined by Josh and Mariska who are from the Mixed team. How are you getting on and how are you settling into Ireland? Ooh, very well I'd like to say. Um, we've thoroughly enjoyed our time. I think uh, it's been just about a week 
and uh, yeah, no complaints so far. We've uh, experienced a very uh, friendly reception, Limerick, and uh, the facilities and the um, sort of accommodation here at the university have been stellar. So <laughs> we've just, uh, yeah, we have no complaints. It's been a great time. Did you have any expectations before you came here? Have, have any of you been here before? No, it's, it's all our first time. Um, I actually didn't imagine this at all. I knew it was an in a university, but um, coming in here, it's like, whoa. <laughs> This is just one amazing facility and the entire campus and the people on the campus, they're also friendly. So yeah, it's um, expectations beyond, yeah, beyond our expectations actually what we had. And how are you finding um, all, all the uh, people you're meeting and all the Irish people? Like I know I for one talk a bit too fast. So I don't know if you've noticed that with the Irish that we, we speak really, really fast and we kind of have like phrases and things and you kind of sometimes, do you like if you've struggled at all or do you think like are the Irish as good crack and mad as you, as you heard? <laughs> So usually you just, uh, when you're speaking to someone and they're just going at you, you just, <laughs> <laughs> you just laugh and just pretend they were telling yeah. a joke. So exactly like that. <laughs> so yeah, but I, I actually don't struggle. I think um, most of the more Afrikaans players mm. um, struggle a bit and they'll be just like, what, what did it just say? Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I don't find it that difficult understanding them. There's a, there's a bit of smiling and waving yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that takes place. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we are so, so thrilled to just experience a different yeah. culture, really. I mean, it's obviously a, a different, a uh, lot of different language, different um, accent, but uh, generally it's been a very friendly reception. Now, obviously, the, the main aim here is for the World Cup. So you're here on the campus where it's going to be taking place. How have you found the tag rugby all week? You've been playing an awful lot. I mean, have you had a break at all? Like, it's just can't <laughs> stop for you guys. I mean, we've had one or two rest days, but it's been mainly games and practices most days. Mm. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, that's what we're here for. Yeah. Um, it's been really, really you know, epic to experience the campus and a bit of Limerick and surrounds. But obviously, we're here first and foremost to play some tag. Um, one thing that I noticed on Tuesday when we were all admiring actually on the sideline was your gear and it was when you came up close we realised the shamrocks you put all over it so whose idea was that and like we were all going we need that gear we want that gear we need that gear <laughs> so originally um, I travelled with the men's to the World Cup mm. um, as their manager and um, we had we had a nice kit but um, I wanted to be more South African yeah so we we try to incorporate being onto an island and you know showing some of the Irish colors and our colors and then our um, chairman Mr. Mac he came with those tights mm. and I said to him you better make more that's gonna be a hit <laughs> you know people are gonna want <laughs> yeah. those tights so yeah I um, mean it was a bit of uh, hits put together and then Someone actually commented on my Facebook and said the fashion police are going to lock us up because <laughs> it's, it's not working. But I, I, I like it to be, you know, full out. People should walk past and see, oh, yep. look, there's people playing tag over there. That's what I love about tag here now, especially in Limerick. Tag rugby is so huge. I initially moved here uh, over three years ago and the only reason I started playing tag rugby was to make friends. And then suddenly you get sucked into it and then you're playing competitively and then you're playing for your county and then you're representing your country at World Cup. It's such an amazing sport for bringing people together. Like, How incredible is it for you guys now to see how much it's growing and how fast it's growing in South Africa? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll take this one. Um, so essentially for us, uh, tag rugby has been uh, bo both a game mainly played by just men mm -hmm. and also at grassroots level in the, in the, in the schools. But in this last year, we've really given it a go in terms of the mixed approach. Yeah. And this is the first time, obviously, we're bringing a, a mixed side anywhere. And we have been absolutely blown away by the, the girls stepping up to the plate. I mean, really, they've been playing for some, a few months, mm -hmm. um, a, a couple, a few years, but really stepping up to the plate to international level and just trusting the, the structures and the process. Um, we've been really proud of our, our sort of the way that we, we're starting to trust our girls more. Yeah, I think that's a huge thing in tag rugby. Um, now, Pig and Porter, it's the big one. It's the one mm. that we all love here. It's kind of one of the biggest weekends in Limerick the entire year. It's, I think, the biggest tag rugby festival in all of Europe yeah. as well. I think so, So yeah. it must be great to be part of that now, and I'm sure we're, everyone is talking about it. So I think you've yes. heard, obviously, great tag rugby, but also a great festival as well. Yes, yeah. I think the, the social element is definitely <laughs> <laughs> going to be tempting. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, obviously, we want to give it a good go in yeah. the games as well. I think we, we're entering two sides. 
I'm um, going to mix it up, uh, guys and girls. So there's going to be a few girls playing with guys that haven't before, you know, played together. So that's going to be, yeah, just, just fun to, to ch- uh, check out the chemistry and just really have a lot of fun, I think. Um, after the test matches um, this evening, I think tomorrow is mainly going to just be about expressing ourselves and yeah. then enjoying the festival. And having fun. And Men's having fun. team, don't forget to pass the ball to the girls at Pig and Porter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big one. Um, so, as I said, you are going to come back for the World Cup as well. And you, like, I'm presuming this trip now is going to generate even more interest when you go home because social media now is so great. I'm sure everyone at home is seeing what you're doing. And as you said, more girls now are going to want to get involved. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's the plan when you go home to build and get more and more, mainly girls probably, and, and more guys on board with Tag Rugby and then come back with even more teams for, for the World Cup. Yeah, definitely. Um, last year we did uh, plan on entering a mixed team into the World Cup and it was literally like a month or two before that then we had to withdraw because we, there was no interest. Um, um, I, for one, was very gutted because, mm-hmm. you know, I, I have a passion for tag and and I, for the first couple of probably two years, I was the only female in the league and um, sure, uh, slowly but surely we got more girls and now we've actually got, you know, a team that we can bring over and we've got girls and, and it's actually girls that haven't played tag before so they are able to go out there and show other girls that you don't need experience, you yeah. can just come and you can learn because we've got two girls that have been playing for four months wow. and they're doing exceptionally well. So, you know, um, they can go back and say, listen, yeah, I was a hockey player, but I'm a tag player now. Come join in the fun. So, yeah, um, hopefully when we get back, um, people will see um, uh, how well we played. and um, How much fun it is. <laughs> and, yeah, and hopefully we will get the win tonight. and then Yeah. And that you get to travel with it too, which I think is yes. great. Find a sport that can bring you around the world. Mm. Yeah. Um, are you on the 6 a.m. flight as well? Are you on the early well, flight? We're, we're actually not on the 6 a.m. flight, but my dear friend here, Josh, <laughs> booked a very early flight at 11 a.m. So because of his flight, we <laughs> all have to wake up oh. at 6 a.m. to get, get oh. him there in time. Being thrown under the bus, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> Well, look, all we can say is enjoy the Pink Porter. Best luck in all the games. And I really cannot wait to welcome you back here for the World Cup. Yeah, thank you so much. I think we, we heard that it's it's like 100 years of Irish independence, like 2021. There'll be loads. So that'll be, so I mean, that's, that'll just add like a cherry to the, uh, to the tournament. I oh, mean, yeah. We, like we're really looking forward to it. Pig and Porter is just a, just a small taste of what the World Cup is going to be like. Yeah. We're going to throw the best and biggest tag rugby party that no. you can ever imagine. <laughs> well, we'll turn up and we're looking forward and to it. And yeah. don't book an early flight home. <sighs> I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Been targeted again. <laughs> Stay a few extra days and then you can enjoy what Ireland has to offer as well. Exactly. Thank you so much and the very best of luck. Well, that's it for this week's show. Next week, we'll have highlights from the Pride Parade. I'm Megan Scully and this is the Limerick Post show, keeping Limerick posted.